Okay, Nehemiah chapter 12. Now the walls and gates and all have been built. Now we're going to dedicate them. Now these are the priests and the Levites. All priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. That went up with Jerubbabel, the son of Shatio and Jeshua, Shariah, Jeremiah, Ezra. So here's a list again, those that came up. Amariah, Moloch, Hadesh, Shachaniah, Rehum, Merah, Ido, Gineana, Abijah. You'll find his name in Luke chapter 1, verse 5. Marum, Medea. That Abijah, that's the, the course of John the Baptist's father. To offer their incense. Uh, verse 5, Bilkah, Shemaiah, Jorib, Jediah, Shalu, Amak, Halkadiah, Jediah. Now those are G, the J-E, E-L, those are Jehovah's, either prefix or suffix. These were the chief of the priests and of their brethren in the days of Jeshua, that's the high priest. Moreover, the Levites, Jeshua, Benenai, Kadniel, Sherbiah, Judah, and Madaniah, which was over the thanksgiving, he and his brethren. So there was set up, not only priests, you know, you bring your animal to the altar and they slayed and killed the blood and all that. Not only was there a priest sitting there, okay, this is the bread, it has to be laid out properly. You go in, do the candles. Now, by your verse 4, you go in and offer the incense. Everybody had a position. And here's a position called, in chapter 8, that America, we used to have a holiday once a year, giving thanks of the Pilgrim Fathers to God the Father. There was one special class of Levites, verse 8, that their main job was to give thanks to God. That's all the time. He and his brethren. I would assume, I'm going to assume that people would come up to him and say, hey, this is what God's done for me and my family today. This is what God's done for us in the past year. You know, you see those sacrifices that we just brought? You won't believe how God, I mean, that's, I'm, that's how I'm figuring. Because when we have proper church service in the past, we'll say, anybody got a testimony? Well, that's giving thanks to God. We ought to give thanks to God. Paul said, rejoice evermore. Even in your misery, you're to give thanks to God. It can always be worse. You know, Job lost it all. And yet, he did not charge God foolishly. And back to Bible, verse 9, and you and I, their brethren, were over against them in the watching. Over against means they were next to. Opposite. And Jeshua begat Je Jehoiakim, Jehoiakim also begat Elisha, and Elisha begat Jodiah, Jodiah begat Jonathan, Jonathan begat Jehua. In the days of Jehoiakim, or Jehoiakim, were priests, the chief of the fathers of Sariah, Moriah, of Jeremiah, and Hanimoth, of Ezra, Mishalom, Amaziah, Jehoram, uh, Melchu, Jonathan of Shabiah, Joseph, there's a good name. And how how do you get that one good name in there out of all these other names? Joseph. I believe that means of uh, Rachel saying, I think it has to do with ask of God. But that Joe, J O, Jehovah. Haram, Ada, Merov, Hilkiah of Ido, Zechariah, Gidhan, Githan, Meshilam, Abijah, Zechariah. Min, minimum of uh, Moabiah, <clears throat> Peliah, uh, Pilka, Shemua, Shemua, Jehovah, <clears throat> and of uh, Jerib, <clears throat> excuse me, Mathaniah of uh, Jedio, Uzai, Shalom, Kelai of Amok, Eber, of uh, Hilkiah, Heshbiah, Jedediah, and Nathaniel. Those are some of these names that are the same, but they're a different person. 
And that may lay out some confusion or some problems they have with the Bible. Men have the same name. And they're odd, weird names to say, well, it's got to be only one person. Well, we read about Jeremiah, and that's not the Jeremiah of the Bible. The Levites, in the days of Elisheba, jo Joida, and of course, I'm pronouncing them not the same every time, Lord forgive me, and Jehoam and Jedua were recorded, recorded chief of the fathers, so they had in the books. And you say, well, what's all these names? Who cares? Do you realize there's coming a time in the tribulation period when that temple is there? I don't know when it's going to be built. Before or after the rapture, I have no idea. But I do know one thing. In the tribulation period, there will be the temple. And there will be people doing the service of that temple. And Satan, three and a half years, is going to open up. He's going to be the most holy place. But there are going to be people in that temple, and they got to know who they are to do that temple service. God has called out 144,000 men in the tribulation period, all of, Jew, uh, all of Jeru, uh, the Jews, of every tribe but Dan and Ephraim. they got to know who they are. You can't have a Dan of 144,000. You can't have an Ephraim of 144,000. they got to know who they are. God knows who they are. And they're not people that run around that complain to be Jehovah Witnesses. There's coming a time that these names are going to be very important to the Jewish family because they're going to give ID who they are. Now, after the tribulation period of seven years, and Jesus Christ comes the second advent, a thousand years millennial reign of Jesus, the Bible says the sons of Zadok are going to do that service because they've been a faithful priesthood before God. God has got to reveal Zadok's family to do the service. And we've seen in Ezra, we've seen in Nehemiah, we've seen a family come up. Well, who are you? Well, we're here. We don't see your name. But we're not going to exclude you yet. We're going to wait for the Urim and Thurim. But right now, you're polluted. Israel today, they're kind of, they're, they're kind of polluted because they don't know who they are. A lot of them had their names changed during World War II. So they would resist Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party to misidentify who they are by their Jewish names by taking on new names for their protection. But God is going to call them by name. God knows who they are. They don't. There's only one man today that can trace his genealogy and that's Jesus Christ all the way back to Adam. Paul tells Timothy and Paul tells Titus endless genealogy. Now, we have genealogy charts of the Bible, which is very good. But don't get overzealed in that. It'd be interesting to find out who your family is, but I know people in my own family that spent their money, their time, and their effort for no avail. You get so far, well, I don't know that person. I, don't, I mean, immediate family is okay. But for the Jewish people, we have chronicles, we have these names because they're going to be important one day. And we look at these names, realize God knows our name. There's a land's book of life, and in the land's book of life, I know personally my name is there. And if you're saved and born again and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, your name's there. Is that not important? Imagine the angels walking up to that book and saying, ha, Stanley, what kind of name is that? That's a name of my child. I'm a son of God. My name is there. My name is royalty. And some people, I've heard some people say, and I don't know, we may find our names in the very Bible that we read. By what our name means may be in there. I don't know. I'm not going to say it's wrong. I'm not going to say it's right. But these names have something, and I totally uh, lost where I was. 22. And the Levites, also in the days of Elisha, but Jehoiada, and Je or should have been 23, but Jehoiada and Jedu were recorded chief of the fathers. Also the priest to the reign of Darius the Persian. That's the man that said go and build the temple. That's the man that conquered Babylon. The sons of Levi, the chief of the fathers. It means you're important. You're the head. Were written in the book of the Chronicles. Now, I bet that Mark is the word of God. Is that the Chronicles that's in the Chronicles? There could be others. I don't know. 
I've not investigated that. But that could be the Chronicles we've already studied. Even to the days of Jonathan, the son of Elisha. There might be other Chronicles. It might be Chronicles found in Ezra. And the chief of the Levites, Heshabiah, Shabiah, Jeshua, the son of Kadmiel, with their brethren, family, over against them next to, to praise and to give thanks. Again, there's that praise and thanks. According to the commandment of David, the man of God. You mean the guy that committed adultery? Now, let me ask you a question for those people. Oh, you know, did David set up Asaph and the singers before or after he committed adultery and murdered Uriah? That was after. We have the law given by Moses, correct? Set who the priests are, what they're supposed to do, what the offering. David also come along, God is loud into the Holy Spirit. I am going to set up the singers for the temple that is not built yet. And the Bible goes to say that, that wicked sinner, David, man of God. I'm a sick, wicked sinner before God, and I'm called a child of God. And I can't lose that state. And the sure mercy to David, David and his son are never going to lose that state, son of, uh, man of God. It's forever written there. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall not pass away. And there is written about David. David set up the singers. David and Asaph were so well before God. Asaph is still, even after the 70 years, they're going back in the, into the, to the land. Asaph's family is still there and they're still singing. God has a stock in names. And I learned great things from Sunday school from my pastor this Sunday morning about names. And man, it's just a wonderful thing that God knows my name. You know how many people have been on this planet since Adam? The Bible says that God knows every angel, every star, and he calls them all by names. And yet he knows my name. A man had an invitation, I, I think it was the 80s or 90s, you could buy a star and name it. No, you can't, because God had already named them. Remarkable names, and yet... I am named upon, Jesus says, I know my sheep by name. And he's got more than a hundred sheep. He's got two sets of sheep. He's got Jewish sheep and he's got Gentile sheep. I'm just happy. And verse 25, Mattai and Bacchabiah, Obadiah, Meshaman, Talmud, Akrib were porters, gatekeepers. He stood at the gate, keeping the ward at the threshold of the gates. So at the gates, there were there were rooms. There were, and you've probably seen over England, you see those guys, they stand there. And right behind them is this little room. The, the guards stand. That's what it is. He lost my place again. And these were the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Jeshua, the son of Jehoiakim. In the days of Nehemiah the governor and Ezra the priest and scribe. Those are the two books we've been studying. So Nehemiah is the governor. Who is the priest? Ezra. And at the dedication, here we go, finally the dedication. It's been built. Now we're going to give it to God. Now we're going to give it to God. The wall of Jerusalem, they sought the Levites out, went looking for the Levites, out of all their places. To bring them to Jerusalem to keep the dedication with gladness. We need the Levites. Both with thanksgiving, again, look how many times that's showing up, and with singing, with cymbals, you know, those things, toing. You know, you never see those in churches. It may be. What do you do with the holiness people when they say there's no musical instruments in the church? <laughs> cymbals, psalteries, I think that's that little three string or four string instrument and with harps you know what a harp is today in the church it's a piano turnover and you don't play with your fingers it has the little drums or something that bangs on it a harp is a piano today and they're both scriptural and rightfully so and the sons of the singers gathered themselves together both out of the plain country round about Jerusalem in the plains 
and from the villages of Nephthali, and from the house of Gilgal, and out of the fields of Gibeah and Asmoth. For the singers had built their villages round about Jerusalem. Can I say it? Can I can I do it? I mean, if you're of the new generation, you're not going to know what I'm talking about. But you ever hear the village people? There they are. Are they not singers? Verse 29, there's the village people that are singers to God. The village people today, they were just an imitation. I thought it was interesting. And the priests and the Levites purified themselves, made themselves clean. You got to be clean for the Lord. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us. You got to put your best on. Now listen, your best. I can imagine Paul did not have clean clothes, but he put his best prison clothes on. When um, oh, torture for Christ, get his name now. Richard Rombard. I don't think he had a suit and tie, but you know, he, you know, he wrote when they were in prison. They would straighten their raggedy clothes and you know make themselves neat and folded. And this just scum. I mean, the, the filth of the floors and the rats and all. But they made themselves presentable. I'm not for a stickler for, you know, wearing three-piece suits, but, you know, be nice. Purify the people. The priests first, the Levites next, then the people. And the gates and the wall. Here we go. Then I, Nehemiah, brought up the princes of Judah upon the wall. So now they're on top of the wall. And appointed two great companies of them. That gave thanks again. Where our one went in the right hand upon the wall toward the dung gate. Now, when we started the gates in Nehemiah, we went to the sheep gate, we ran around. Now we're starting with the dung, the sewer gate, the, the waste gate. Of all gates to begin with, to dedicate. Okay, we're going to dedicate this to God. What are we going to get? We're going to do the dung gate. Now, there's something in that. The dung gate. That's doo doo in the Bible. That's manure. That's what animals would do on the streets. People back then would take their, their dirty stuff and throw them out the window. They had dogs and pigs that were unclean and they would be scavengers. You read about that sometimes. Look up the history of garbage on Google. It's an interesting thing, especially in New York City. And after them went. Hoshia, and half of the princes of Judah, Nazariah, Ezra, and Mishilam, Judah, and Benjamin, and Shemaiah, and Jeremiah, and certain of the priests' sons with trumpets, namely Zechariah, the son of Jonathan, the son of Shemaiah, the son of Mananiah, the son of Micaiah, and these names have showed up before, the son of Zachar, the son of who? Asaph. There's the singing family again. You guys are in charge for the music for the Lord. And I guarantee it wasn't fleshy music. It wasn't uh, country western music. It wasn't rock music. It wasn't contemporary music. It was music that glorified God in soul and spirit. And his brethren Shemini and Azareo and Melani and Gilead, my Nathaniel and Judah, Hamani, with musical instruments of David, the man of God again, and Ezra described before them. David prescribed the music, David prescribed the instruments. And if David did not write down those instruments, you didn't use them. And who knows, it could be the same instruments that David, I don't know. Maybe they were carried away also. Or maybe there's a list. At the fountain gate. Yeah, now we're getting better. Fountain gate. Which was over against them. They went up by the stairs of the city of David, Zion. At the going up of the wall above the house of David. David's house is <laughs> it's not the same David's house, but that's where David's house was. 
even unto the water gate east where we've gone through these cities. It's amazing from David's house that he took a walk one day and here we are. What's there? A water gate or a fountain gate? And I wonder who he saw. Kind of interesting, isn't it? And the other company of them that gave thanks again went over against them. Next two. And, af and I after them and half the Half of the people upon the wall from beyond the tower of the furnaces, we read about them earlier, even unto the broad wall. You can follow what we read earlier. And from above the gate of Ephraim, and above the old gate, and above the fish gate, and the tower of Heniel, these are all this repeat, and the tower of Mia, or Mia, even unto the sheep gate, that's where we started before. And they stood still in the prison gate. So stood the two companies of them that gave thanks again in the house of God, and I and half the rulers with me. And the priest, Elkiah, Messiah, and Micaiah, Ehoian, Zechariah, and Hananiah with trumpets. Da -da -da! And Meshiha, and Shimaha, and Eliezer, and Uzai, and Jehoiim, and Malchuka, Elam, and Ezer. And the singers sang loud. Loud. Praising God, not for the flesh. And Jezariah, their overseer. They had someone in charge. Also that day, they offered great sacrifices and rejoiced for God had made them rejoice with great joy. The wives also and the children rejoiced, whole family event, so that the joy of Jerusalem was heard even far off. It just echoed through the land. Wait till the millennium. You know, we get disturbed by car radios today. Well, we're going to get a loud assembly in the millennium, but it's going to be the praise and glory of Jesus. It won't hurt our ears, and it won't be it won't be filthy, it won't be vile. It'll be for Jesus. And at that time, where some appoint over the ch chambers for the treasures, gold, silver, for the offerings, people brought. For the first fruits, the tithes of the land, and for the tithes, ten percent, to gather them, going to gather unto them, out of the fields of the cities, the portions of the law for the priests and Levites. Everybody was to bring the tithes of the land: figs, grapes, money, cows, whatever you had, and they would gather. And they kept them in storage at the at the well at Jerusalem. And they were given for the priests. And the Levites. For Judah rejoiced for the priests. And for the Levites that waited. That means they took care of A waiter waits. Doing the service of the Lord. That don't mean they just stand around. You know flinging their phones. Same thing as waiter or waitress. And both the singers and the porters. Kept the ward of their God. And the ward of the purification. According to the commandment of David. And of Solomon his son. Solomon obeyed what David set forth when that temple was built. For in the days of David and Asaph, 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 here we go all the way back again, of old, for there were chief of the singers and songs of praise. And thanksgiving again unto God, not the flesh. And all Israel in the days of Zerubbabel and in the days of Nehemiah gave the portions of, to, of the singers. They had their lot, they had their pay. And the porters, they were given a, a salary out of tithes of the people. Every day his portion. 
And I see a lot of people say, you know, uh, minimum wage is not biblical, it's not all that. If you want to go Bible in the Old Testament and the time of Jesus, you're supposed to pay your employees that day. Right there. Every day they got salary. When you hold it off, you know, shall owe no man nothing. You owe your employees to Friday. Bible counts, pay him that day. Five cents worth. Every day his portion. And they sanctify holy things, everything that the people gave, unto the Levites. And the Levites sanctify, set apart them unto the children of Aaron. So the priests are back in service. They're back getting what they deserve from the people. And everyone's just pleased in serving the Lord. 